A common misdiagnosis when looking at gluteal tendinopathy is blaming the piriformis or a piriformis syndrome. Now, the common advice that's given for piriformis syndrome is to stretch the piriformis. Now, this stretch involves moving into hip flexion, hip adduction, and external rotation, which is a provocative test for gluteal tendinopathy because that increases the amount of compressive load over the gluteal tendons. Now, if this stretch is being prescribed for gluteal tendinopathy, it can often lead into the chronicity of symptoms and the exacerbation of the symptoms. Now, taking a look at the piriformis muscle, it actually inserts over onto the superior border of the great trochanter whereas the gluteal tendons attach over the top of the grade trochanter. We also have the iliotibial band attaching from the ilium, which extends down over the grade trochanter, which can compress the gluteal tendons when moving into an excessive amount of hip adduction. This does not, however, affect the piriformis muscle. But the issue is that it is very close proximity, particularly those posterior fibers to the piriformis muscle. So we can see how easily it may be misdiagnosed, particularly when palpating around the piriformis muscle. It's very close to the gluteal tendons and the posterior fibers of the gluteus medius and the deeper gluteus minimus. Because the pain for gluteal tendinopathy is typically around that deep gluteal space. We can see how it can refer into that area and even in the lateral and posterior aspect of the thigh. So the misdiagnosis of piriformis syndrome happens all too often due to the location of symptoms. However, when we look at these provocative factors, the increased amount of hip adduction and the increased amount of compression, over the greater trochanter, that leads to the increase in symptoms. So simply treating the piriformis and stretching the piriformis may not see the resolution of symptoms and it may lead to the chronicity of the pathology.